Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I wanted to talk to you about some exciting news, which I haven't really seen reported anywhere, but I think will be really big news in the flight sim world, as well as, uh, frankly, anyone else who's interested in World War II or wargaming will be interested in this. Uh, the news has to do with Microprose, the old classic strategy and simulation studio which was founded by Bill Steely and Sid Meier back in the early 1980s. Uh, Microprose developed some of the all-time classic strategy games like Civilization, XCOM, amongst many others, uh, as well as uh, it was very well known for uh, the simulation titles it was involved in, such as sort of the one of the all-time iconic flight games, Falcon 4.0, um, Gunship 2000, F-15 Strike Eagle, and my personal favorite, B-17, The Mighty Eighth. Uh, today's news has to do with that last title, B-17, The Mighty Eighth. Now, I didn't report on it, but it's been, you know, it's been out there uh, that earlier this year, Microprose announced a sequel to B-17, The Mighty Eighth, uh, so when they announced this, if for lack of a better word, I guess we'll call it B-17 The Mighty Eighth 2, uh, when that was first mentioned earlier this year, Microprose also had some pretty interesting news announcing that you'd be able to fly the B-24 as well as the B-17. So now it looks like you're going to you know, be able to fly the B-24, which I don't think I've ever seen another at least serious flight sim game that includes the B-24 add the B-17 to it, and that's already some pretty big news. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. What I'm actually here to talk to you about today is that in addition to those two bombers, it looks like you're also going to be able to fly the British Avro Lancaster bomber. So the iconic British bomber that was responsible for, you know, all of our memories around dam busting or around, you know, the combined bomber offense of the nighttime bombing raids by Arthur Bomber Harris and sort of the British laying those firestorms over, you know, Hamburg and, and you know, flattening Berlin and, and all of these famous nighttime raids that were, you know, not only led by the Lancaster, but most famously led by the British Avro Lancaster bomber. This is big news. This is not something that I've seen reported anywhere. Um, and so what what does that mean for B-17 The Mighty Eighth? If you're going to have the B-17 and the B-24, structurally the game doesn't change at all. It's still the sequel to B-17 The Mighty Eighth. But if you're going to be including the Avro Lancaster, this game very quickly stops looking like a Mighty Eighth sequel and starts looking more like something just, you know, it's shaping up to be more like Bomber Command, or, or sorry, not Bomber Command, but the Combined Bomber Offensive, um, which will have to include area raids, city busting raids, as well as sort of the daytime, quote, unquote, precision raids by the American 8th Air Force. This game's scope is rapidly increasing. So, you know, this is really big news, in my opinion. I don't think we've ever seen a game that focuses on the entire Bomber Offensive against Germany. The only game that may be included in that would be Gary Grigsby's Bombing the Reich, which is a game that is a strategy game first and foremost. There is no flight sim to it. There is no ability to jump in the cockpit to drop the bombs. It is literally just a game with a giant map, thousands of targets, hundreds of squadrons. You plan every single mission, every single day. You send them out and you see what happens. And, uh, and this is a game that is shaping up to be a game that lets you fly those missions in high resolution 3D, uh, hopefully authentically modeled aircraft. And that's really exciting. But before we get into this news, because it's, it's more than just including the Avro Lancaster in B-17 The Mighty Eighth, it's actually big news about Microprose and how they're intending to develop this game. Before we get into all of that, let's take a step back and let's just sort of ground ourselves into how we got here. So back in May of 2020, so what, like seven months ago, almost eight months ago, uh, Microprose had a big announcement, namely that they were back. You know, Microprose was founded, as I said, in the 1980s by Bill Steely and Sid Meier. Um, by the early 1990s, uh, Sid Meier sort of went on his own way to found uh, Fair Access. Uh, and in the late 1990s, Hasbro Interactive purchased a majority share of Microprose. So by the late 90s, Microprose was sort of on the way out as its own standalone studio. After just a couple of years, Hasbro sold their stake in Microprose to, I believe it was a French company called Infograms. And then by 2003, Microprose was gone altogether. We 
it was gone. They weren't making games anymore. Their last Microprose development studio was closed. They weren't publishing as Microprose. Microprose was gone. After about 15 years where some of the titles were obviously being cared for and developed by other studios, some of them were sort of sitting in, in, in the dust doing nothing, and Microprose was just this fond memory of people's past, after a little over 15 years, in 2019, uh, the brand was sold to David Ligeti, and I may be mispronouncing that, but essentially he's a uh, individual who was one of the, the founders of uh, Bohemia Interactive Australia. So Bohemia, Bohemia Interactive, obviously the company behind the Arma games. And then he would go on to found some of his other, other companies on his own. I think one of them was like Titan IM or something like that. But basically he ended up leaving Bohemia after several years, working on his own, running his own company that was selling like military grade simulation software and sort of being very successful on his own. Eventually he ended up purchasing the Microprose brand last year in 2019. Fast forward to 2020, uh, and in May of 2020, uh, Ligeti had obviously done his work. He had been working with different development companies, and they ended up announcing that Microprose was back. So Microprose, as a brand, as a company, as someone who was active in the game development space, is now back under this new brand uh, led by him. And so in May of 2020, Microprose announced that they were going to be developing Task Force Admiral, or, or sorry, publishing, Task Force Admiral, which is a game that's already pretty far under development. It's a game about sort of carrier and naval combat in the South Pacific during World War II and sort of the 1942 period. Uh, they announced that they would be publishing uh, Second Front, which is kind of more of like a traditional hex-based uh, war game by the looks of it, but it also kind of does some interesting looking things. Um, and then they were also, I believe, as at this time they announced they were going to be publishing Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age, uh, which is a game being developed by Terrasic Games and is, uh, I believe they're a new studio with some of the uh, developers from Cold Waters. And this is going to be a game that essentially is very similar in concept to Fleet Command. Uh, you're going to be commanding naval forces in a third world war of either the Warsaw Pact or NATO uh, during World War III. Uh, and in real-time 3D graphics, you know, with in modern as of the 70s or 80s uh, naval technology. Uh, and it looks really interesting. But I think one of the things when this game was first, when all of these games were first announced, is they didn't really show anything new from a Microprose brand perspective. What I mean by that is they didn't talk about any of the games that Microprose was known for. So Microprose appeared to be back as a brand, and they were publishing these games, but they haven't actually, as of you know when the games were first announced in May, they hadn't announced any of the games that people knew Microprose for as new games that they were working on. And that changed on May 26th of 2020, when Microprose announced that they were going to be making a sequel to B-17 The Mighty Eighth. This would technically be the third B-17 game in the Microprose history, uh, but it would, be my, it would be B-17 The Mighty Eighth, you know, 2, if you will. And when they announced that game, um, this was one of those games that I had already mentioned that Microprose was really known for. It was one of the last games that Microprose published and made on their own um, in the early 2000s before, before they sort of went away. B-17 The Mighty Eighth, the original game, allowed you to play as a bomber commander, where you commanded a single bomber, through a 25-mission career over Germany, um, and your goal basically was to just survive the career and come back alive with your crew. It also had a squadron commander mode that allowed you to take command of a squadron, I think it was 12 bombers, and you would plan your missions, you'd plan the altitude, you'd pick the target, you'd pick the payload, and your goal would be to obviously destroy the targets and, and basically fight from 1944 to 45. You were flying the B-17G variant. Um, the missions were all relatively small. I think the most you ever had on the, on the screen was like 20 bombers. I think there were two sections of 12, but it might have actually just been two sections of six. It might have been 12 bombers per mission. And there were interceptors, you know, BF-109s, BF or F-190s, uh, P-51s, P-47s. But the, the flights of fighters that would come in would usually only be three or four fighters as well. So it was all very small scale. But again, this is early 2000s tech. So when they announced that they were making this, this new game, this new B-17, The Mighty Eighth, I think there were a lot of questions from folks like, first off, like, okay, it sounds like you're developing it yourself. That's exciting. But like, what is this? You know, are we going to have a campaign or what is it? 
And some of the initial information that they released about the game was that it was going to be a VR first project, but also played a playable with non VR. So I think some of the original Microprose fans may have had some hesitation with that. It's like, okay, so is this, what is this? They also announced that it was going to have co-op with your friends. So you could fly a bomber with all 10 crew members, you know, you being one of them and the other nine being AI, which is how the original B-17, the Mighty Eighth, worked. And you could jump around to different crew positions in the plane. So you could, you know, you could take over, but it would be otherwise AI run. But they, but they announced as part of this that, like, it would support co-op. So you could fly missions with 10 friends, each one of them taking up a different post in the plane. So that's a really cool concept. But that also sort of posed the question of, of, okay, what is B-17 The Mighty A's? Because, you know, there was also some thought is there's been a lot of games that have been developed with this co-op idea. One of the most popular or, or well-known games recently that's come out is called Wolfpack, which is a game where you command a German submarine during World War II. And you can do this co-op gameplay with your friends where they can all play these different positions within the German U-boat. And you can try and attack enemy convoys. But the way that game works is it's just like, you pick the year or the time when you want to be launching the attack. You pick the size of the enemy, how well escorted they are. And then you go and you fight the mission and you play just the one attack on the convoy. And then you're done. The game's over. There's no campaign. There's no, you know, it's not like Silent Hunter 3 where you have this progression throughout the war. You basically set some initial criteria, fight your mission, and it's over. So I think when they announced that, okay, this game's going to have co-op with up to 10 members on a plane, uh, that it's VR... You know, I think there's been a there's been some hesitation within some folks in the flight sim community to say like, what is this? Is it another wolf pack or is it B seventeen the mighty eighth? Like, do I get to fly for twenty five missions? Do I get to fly through the whole war, or do I just play once and it's kind of like a sandbox experience? And so there's there's not a lot of clarity out there because they haven't really told us anything else about the game. They have told us that in one an interview that that myself Tortuga um, and uh, and Jean Marciniak of the Single Malt Strategy podcast uh, did. Uh, and the developer dialogue podcast did with with Microprose. They said, well, they're going to have way more planes than just you know the original B seventeen. So that's exciting. Maybe we'll get to see huge formation of bombers flying around. But like we haven't heard anything about a campaign, we haven't heard anything about a career, we haven't heard anything other than the fact that the B twenty four, which is good, that's going to be really cool. But the B twenty four will also be there. We don't know how detailed the game is going to be. Um, you know, they've said they want it to be authentic and really detailed, but that's that's the extent of what we know, or what we did know. Um, we also knew that the game was being developed in house, or that's what it seemed to be being developed in house. But it was all very early in the development. Like, there's no gameplay trailers, there's concept art, and that's really all we've seen. All of that changed in November of 2020, when very, very quietly we found out some new and pretty important information. And that's where the Avro Lancaster comes into play with this. On November 9th in 2020, an article was posted on CBC News in Canada. The title of the article was Meet the 97-Year-Old Second World War Veteran Who Is Helping a New Video Game Take Off. Bob Middleton, who flew on the Lancaster bomber, is helping with a new project from Microprose Canada. That's the first that we've heard anything about Microprose Canada. In fact, Microprose's website doesn't even reference Microprose Canada, and it doesn't reference anything about Avro Lancasters and uh, World War II bombing from the British perspective. The only references on the website on B-17, the Mighty Eighth, are to the B-17 and the B-24. The article goes on to talk a little bit about Bomber Command and its role in World War II, but then it has this quote, which helps us really understand a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, the, the quote starts, Those harrowing and history-shaping flights will be what gamers experience in Valiant Effort, created by Hamilton-based developer Andrew Spearin and Microprose Canada. While it began as Spearin's own standalone project, Valiant Effort will be included in the next version of the popular B-17 Flying Fortress series. So this is where things start to fall into place. This is where we can start piecing things together. Um, first off, this article was posted on the Valiant Effort Discord as well as on the Microprose Discord. So it's clear that this is all, this is official. This isn't like some random news article that got something wrong. Um, it appears that Microprose just hasn't sort of 
packaged the press releases all together yet. Uh, I did talk to Andrew Spear, and, and he did indicate that uh, we would be hearing more next year about this. So I expect, you know, in the coming months, we'll hear a little bit more formally uh, in sort of typical PR circles. Still, it was kind of an interesting way for all of this to start sort of leaking out through this article in a, in a well-regarded Canadian publication. But we can start to piece some of this together. Valiant Effort uh, is a game that we've known a little bit about for about two years now. Uh, it's a game that's being developed by Sharp Edge, or it was, I guess, a game that was being developed by Sharp Edge End Studio, uh, which is being led by Andrew Spearin, who was involved in Insurgency, Day of Infamy. Now, what's not clear, the following information that I'm going to talk to you about is information that's posted on the Valiant Effort uh, website. But according to this, the game was focused on delivering a, a experience that focuses on the Royal Canadian Air Force's uh, bombers uh, within the realm of Bomber Command. Uh, it would have a 30-mission campaign that would start in April of 1944 and move until August 1944, so sort of the run-up to D-Day, the missions surrounding uh, the combined bomber offensive against Germany to support the eventual landings uh, in, in Normandy and then the immediate aftermath. It's a game that would support VR, as well as a three-player cooperative mode where you fly a lane caster with your friends and attempt to fight different missions with your friends uh, cooperatively. So we can kind of see how both that, that multiplayer cooperative mode will, will fit nicely with what we were talking about for B-17 The Mighty Eighth earlier. Um, but that's kind of all we know. I mean, there, there's some other information that we know in the frequently asked questions. Uh, the website originally said they were aiming for a launch date in 2020. That obviously hasn't happened. Um, they're planning on building Valiant Efforts with the Unreal Engine 4. Um, the game will be available in PC, possibly on Steam and the Epic Store. Um, they are also talking about including uh, some DLC or some extra planes at some point in the future. So they talked about including the Vickers Wellington, the Hanley Page Halifax, the de Havilland Mosquito, uh, different variants of the Lancaster. So it seemed like as of the time when they were developing this as its own standalone game, the intent was very much much to make Valiant Effort be a game about the nighttime bomber offensive against Germany, but telling it through a campaign lens with the ability to fly with your friends. So all of that information that I shared was information that had been posted about uh, Valiant Effort as a standalone game. So it's not clear what of that may or may not change, but it is hopeful to me because there isn't anything about a campaign or a career or anything like that in B-17 The Mighty Eighth on the Microprose website. And it seemed like B-17 The Mighty Eighth was in the very early stages of development. If Valiant Effort was rig originally targeting a 2020 launch date, Obviously, they're not there yet, and this is a major change to the focus of the game if they're going to be doing B-17s and B-24s and all of that. So I, I honestly, we probably won't even see it until 2022. That's just my hunch. But it is interesting to see these games coming together, and it is encouraging, assuming that the features from Valiant Effort would be carried over to B-17, the Mighty Eighth, that I'm hopeful that we'll see a career mode and, and a, a deeper game than just a, a co-op game where you get to pick a couple of targets and fly with friends. But, but what else do we know? Well, I went over to the Valiant Effort Discord. I didn't actually know about this. I was just looking for an update on, on the Valiant Effort's game. I basically said, are there any updates on the Valiant Effort game? I noticed that the dev journal hasn't been updated since March. Obviously, you know, a little thing called COVID kind of blew up since then. Uh, but is the team working remotely? Is progress still being made? You know, what's going on here? And Andrew Spearn responded, you know, thanks. Uh, a lot's happened since March. Not sure if you saw earlier in November, but we took a flight in a Lancaster with a veteran who served 33 ops in the war as a navigator. And then he posted this. During the news, it was revealed that we're now working as Microprose Canada and Valiant Effort will be incorporated into the new B-17 Flying Fortress 3 game that we are also now leading the efforts for. So essentially, we've been given the green light to move the project forward with a wider scope than before. We've also received an epic mega grant. 
A more formal announcement is coming in the new year as we have a few more things happening in the background to pull the project together. The pandemic has certainly slowed down progress, but we have been very lucky to have many factors come together this year to ensure a future for this project. So it sounded like they were looking for funding uh, in order to move the game forward. Uh, they submitted to Epic to get a mega grant. Sounds like they got that. And it also sounds like they are now the development studio of B-17 Flying Fortress. So B or B-17, the Mighty Eighth, or whatever this game is going to be called. So a couple of things there. That's interesting that it seems like rather than Microprose having B-17, the Mighty Eighth development underway and doing it themselves, it sounds like Microprose was aware of this game, was sort of following its progress, and then made the decision to either acquire or partner, it's not 100% clear on that, uh, with... Uh, the folks at Valiant Effort, and that's how they became Microprose Canada. So Microprose decided they wanted to do this game, they announced it, then they partnered with someone who's already working on something kind of sort of similar, and now that, that studio is leading the effort. It's not clear how much, like, it's not clear to me whether they're taking what they had already done in Unreal and they're bringing it over to, to Microprose's own engine and own game, or if they're now turning their game into B-17. Like, I'm not sure where the code base lies, um, whether whether it's, you know, m taking what they've developed and bringing it into a new game system or whether it's taking micro Microprose's ideas and bringing in that into their own game system. I, you know, I doubt we'll ever know that, although it would be fascinating to be a fly on the wall for those conversations. Um, Spiron sort of indicated later that they're essentially a subsidiary. Again, this is all publicly available in their Discord, so I'm not revealing any any sources. These were questions I asked openly and were responded to openly. So it's it's pretty interesting to see like what's going to what's going to occur here. I'm I'm curious if this is going to turn into like an IL two of strategic bombing of of Europe in 19 you know 43 to 45, because if they're still trying to do what their original DLC plans were around, like, the Vickers Wellington, the Hanley Page Halifax, the Mosquito. Like, this could rapidly turn into a overall strategic bombing simulation in the way that IL-2 is kind of a tactical World War II simulation on, like, fighters and tactical bombers but doesn't include strategic bombing. Maybe this will be the equivalent of that. Um, you know, I'm excited that they're leading the, the development because I was a little worried with the original Microprose release without any details around a campaign or anything like that. It felt like maybe it was just this quick hodgepodge, let's do a co-op of a B-17 and a B-24 and let you fly a mission. But this feels like it's going to be a more fully fledged, well-rounded effort. Also, getting the Epic Mega Grant involved with Epic may turn some people off of this, but it is interesting because it means they've obviously got funding for this that's outside of just Microprose. So... I'm I'm hopeful that we'll see this this thing turn into, you know, a great all-around bomber simulation. I'm hopeful that we'll get a 30 mission or 60 mission or whatever. You know, I'd love to see this game say, here's the B-17 G-1944 through to the end of the war, or here's the B-17F 1943-42 to the end of the war, or the B-24 and get you to fly Ploy SG or some of the other, you know, famous missions of World War II as well as Bomber Command. You know, the dream would be you're a, it's like IL-2 and you're, you pick your crew member, you join a crew and you try to survive and you go through your whole career uh, at the stage of the war you join, whether you join as a Lancaster crew member, whether you join as a B-17. You know, the ideal world, in my opinion, would be something like il 2s pilot career mode. The even more ideal world would be something like, uh, you know, Microprose's original B-17, the Mighty Eighth, where you can also be a squadron commander, pick your targets, you know, and, and all of that. But, but I don't know. We still don't know a lot. But what we do know today and what is big news, and that's why I did this video, is that Microprose has partnered with Sharp and Studio in Canada. That company is now Microprose Canada, and they are working on a valiant effort and B-17, the Mighty Eighth, as one new project called B-17-3, I guess, uh, and that they are going to be bringing B-17s, B-24s, Avro Lancasters, daytime raids, nighttime raids, potentially with the hope of bringing a whole bunch of more aircraft into a simulation that, if done right, could be the hallmark for strategic bomber games 
in World War II. Let's just hope it's not like War Thunder and it's super arcadey and and whatnot, and let's hope it's more in-depth than something like Wolfpack, which has its place and is a lot of fun, uh, but isn't really sort of that experience mission to mission of what it might have been like to fly in World War II in a bomber. That's all I've got really to say here. Long-winded, long, long video, I think, to say this information, but just sort of sharing my thoughts and my hopes and also what we know about this. Uh, and I guess we'll see, you know, in the coming months, we'll hear more about this. I expect early next year, we'll hear more from MicroPros around this. And uh, with that being said, guys, leave your thoughts down below. Is this something you're excited about? Is this something that you think is, is good news, bad news? What are your thoughts about the upcoming B-17 game? Uh, how about your chances to fly in a B-24 and an Avro Lancaster? Uh, and uh, let's, have a, let's have a discussion down there. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, yet another video uh, by me, the Historical Gamer. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.